chapter 15, Resistance Against Disease. The object of the health reform and the health institute is not to quiet the pains of today. No, indeed. Its great object is to teach the people how to live so as to give nature a chance to remove and resist disease. The power of the human system to resist the abuses put upon it is wonderful. A careful conformity to the laws which God has implanted in our being would ensure health and there would not be a breaking down of the Constitution. A great amount of suffering might be saved if all would labor to prevent disease by strictly obeying the laws of health. The power of the will is a mighty soother of the nerves and can resist much disease simply by not yielding to ailments and settling down into a state of inactivity. In order to preserve health, temperance in all things is necessary. Temperance in labor, temperance in eating and drinking. The body must have sufficient nourishment. The God who gives his beloved sleep has furnished them also suitable food to sustain the physical system in a healthy condition. Nature will restore their vigor and strength in their sleeping hours if her laws are not violated. Each faculty of the mind and each muscle has its distinctive office and all require to be exercised in order to become properly developed and retain healthful vigor. Each organ and muscle has its work to do in the living organism. Every wheel in the machinery must be a living, active, working wheel. Nature's fine and wonderful works need to be kept in active motion in order to accomplish the object for which they were designed. Each faculty has a bearing upon the others and all need to be exercised in order to be properly developed. Bathing frees the skin from the accumulation of impurities which are constantly collecting and keeps the skin moist and pure, thereby increasing and equalizing the circulation. Persons in health should on no account neglect bathing. They should by all means bathe as often as twice a week. In order to maintain equal circulation, there should be an equal distribution of clothing which will bring equal warmth to all parts of the body. There is a much greater work upon us than we as yet have any idea of if we would ensure health by placing ourselves in the right relation to life. The pe peculiar people whom God is purifying unto himself to be translated to heaven without seeing death should not be behind others in good works. In their efforts to cleanse themselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, they should be as far ahead of any other class of people on the earth as their profession is more exalted than that of others. Those who, so far as possible, engage in the work of doing good to others by giving practical demonstration of their interest in them are not only relieving the ills of human life and helping them bear their burdens, but are at the same time contributing largely to their own health of soul and body. Doing good is a work that benefits both giver and receiver. If you forget self in your interest for others, you gain a victory over your infirmities. The pleasure of doing good animates the mind and vibrates through the whole body, 